Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got an action figure unboxing compilation for you, the viewer. Compasses every video I've done to this point of action figures and unboxings. So let's just jump into it. Let's go. Today, we're going to talk about the works of Mark Schultz. But not these works. Today we're going to look at the toys for Cadillacs and dinosaurs. That's right. Now we're going to switch over here and through the magic of editing, all these comics are going to disappear. I'm going to move this toy and then scoop these delicious puppies up. You're not going to see any of this. This will all be removed in post because that's how I roll. We run a tight ship here and we would never slow down any of this with housekeeping. All right, we're back here and we're looking at good old Zeke. Quick the codeless. You know what I'm saying, bro? Okay, so we got Zeke here. He's a message carrying backpack and log launcher. Um, you might recognize some of these molds here um, if you were into uh, Dino Ride. He's got his little secret message decoder down here. He's got a map, he's got some logs, he's got his little uh, backpack and uh, headgear. He's looking pretty sweet. Then we'll, we'll pop over here, and look at his little uh, info ticket on the back here. Zeke. The Zeeks have been domesticated to be used as messenger characters between the villages. It has a message carrying backpack for holding secret documents and if attacked, has a log launcher that can drop logs on poachers below. You know what I'm saying? Zeke's getting it done. If you haven't seen the show or read the comics, they're both excellent. Can't recommend either one of them enough. They're both great. But we'll fill you in here with the whole lore, the, the piece de resistance, if you will, of Cadillacs and dinosaurs. It's set in the Xenozoic era, the 26th century. Here, humanity must rebuild civilization, a world where dinosaurs rule and wilderness and lawless bands of criminals prey on the weak. A world where Jack Cadillac Tenric battles the evil poacher Hammer Terhoon in his classic 1953 Cadillac convertible. Collect them all. And they have. Almost. And we'll get to that at the end of this video. But yeah, that's Zeke. He's pretty cool. And uh, we're going to keep going. So here is Hermes. He's a Dionysus. Dionysus? However you want, however you want to pronounce that. Um, with Dino kicking action. He's He is there to start kicking. And if you get in his way, that's on you. All right. So he's got his little spike armor here. He's got, you know, all, all his little his little bits. All the, I actually like, it. we're getting a little reflection here because of the uh, packaging, but they're all actually really detailed and really well painted. You know what I'm saying? Hermes is like basically like a watchdog. You know, he's his, he's his boy. Uh, Hermes is Jack's pet and watchdog over Jack's garage. See, that's what I just, Jack found Hermes as a baby when its mother was slain by Hammer Terhoon and he raised him as a pet. Uh, Hermes is a Dionysus, and with its arm and leg weapons and dino kicking action, protects the garage from intruders. And he's basically a overgrown watchdog. But yeah, like it, it's really neat to see him and see people's reaction uh, to him in, in the cartoon. And then we're gonna keep moving along here. We've got the, one of the Terhoon brothers here, Vice Terhoon, Evil Poacher, it's right on his, uh, CV, you know, his resume, Evil Poacher, uh, Esquire, you know what I'm saying? So uh, he's got his little, he's got his chainsaw here, he's got his uh, spring-loaded uh, rocket la harpoon launcher here. And like, yeah, like all the paints are really good, like you can you can see all these guys, and you're getting a little bit of the camera action here. But uh, yeah, you can see the paints and the box art and stuff, it was all really good. Like, these, these things were top-notch in 93, you know, looking looking really good. Uh, Vice Terhoon. Vice is the poacher's first lieutenant and the middle brother of the Terhoons. Vice is cunning and wise and secretly looks to supplant Hammer as the leader of the poachers. Vice comes with harpoon launcher and dino buzzsaw for cutting the bones of slain dinosaurs. So he's, he's getting in there Monster Hunter style. He's getting his new gear. It was interesting to me that they made, I, maybe they were going to make a second wave or whatever. But you didn't get like Wilhelmina Sharnhorse. You didn't get some of the other scientist guys. Like you know, there was some cool. There was some cool stuff that they could have done. Uh, but this was a really limited figure series. Um, so yeah, I think we have more cool box art here. Uh, Hammer Terhoon, lead evil poacher. You know, so he is uh, 
CEO of the Poachers. And uh, he's got his Hammer Slammer and uh, Dino Trap. But yeah, like also, like you know, he's got all the face paint and tattoo stuff, fur boots, the whole the whole jam. He's he's got going on there. Um, Hammer Terhoon. He is the leader of the Poachers, a brutal band of lawless smugglers and killers who trap and kill dinosaurs for both pleasure and profit. So when he goes on vacation, it's business and pleasure. You know what I'm saying? He checks both boxes. Hammer is outfitted in camouflage gear and has a trademark face paint. Hammer carries with him his hammer slammer, weapon, and dino trap for killing dinosaurs. You know what I'm saying? He's 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 getting it done. He is really getting it done. We're coming up with coming up with my main man here, Mustafa Cairo, chief engineer, badass all around, Mama Jamma. His Mustafa Blaster. He's naming stuff after himself. You know, so he's got a bit of an ego. You know, he's basically the right-hand man. He has, works at the garage, fixes up a lot of stuff. You know, helps Jack out. He's a good dude. Uh, Mustafa Cairo is Jack Tenrick's chief engineer and best friend. When Jack is in trouble, Mustafa will be there with his powerful weapon, the Mustafa Blaster. Mustafa also carries with him a pipe wrench for fixing vehicles. Mustafa also has a mechanical leg, the result of a battle with evil poachers in which he lost the leg. Part man, part machine, all Mustafa. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're getting we're getting down to the last few figures before we get into the vehicles here, um, and we're we're hopping in here with one of my favorites in the comic and in the show, Hannah Dundee, scientist and diplomat, uh, which she does very little of either of those uh, professions in the comics. Uh, but yeah, she's got her double shooting spring loaded crossbow. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of her her take here is. Um, Pretty interesting, like, you know, her hair's kind of all pulled back behind her. Rarely does she ever have her hair in any kind of ponytail or anything like that. But they did that for her with the figure. But generally, it's a, it's still a solid, decent-looking version of her. And I like it. And we'll, we'll pop over here. Hannah Dundee. Hannah is the scientist and diplomat from the nearby city of Wasoon. She has been sent to the city in the sea to set up trade relations, which she does none of. She rarely does anything. She gets so enamored, ensnared, <laughs> shall we say, with Jack Tenrick and everything that's going on in the city by, uh, by the sea that uh, she's not doing, you know, if if her job is diplomat and scientist, she left that, at, you know, back in Wasoon. She's not doing any of it. Uh, she teams up with Jack, armed with her double shot crossbow to do battle against those who want to destroy science and nature. And so, yeah, the funny thing about that is like in the, in the show, like, you know, she mentions it, you know, and she comments on it, like, you know, very, very f infrequently about her scientist and diplomatic role, but mostly she's just like, you know, on, on the adventure and getting pulled into Jack's work, which is really, which is really the, the key ingredient there. Uh, they, they make a good duo. Um, and so the, the aforementioned, Jack Tenrick. Um, this here, this here is not how you, I, you rarely ever see him like this, like at least in the show and stuff like that. I don't, you know, uh, I don't want to, I'm not going to downplay jungle fighting Jack Tenrick, but you know, soon, soon you'll see basically his, like his stock uh, outfit. Um, so yeah, we have, we have him here. He's got his little tattoo, got a tattoo on there for the uh, Machinato Vitae, the machinery of life. I'll have, you know, and if you don't know now, you know, but yeah, all, all these figures are really great. They're really well detailed. And like I said, they're kind of have that like kind of simple Kenner, but like a bit bigger than like the Star Wars figures and stuff like that. Um, but really, really nice sculpt and, uh, you know, well detailed. But you know, we'll, we'll flip over here. Jungle Fighting Jack Tenrick. Jungle Fighting Jack Tenrick comes outfitted in a new rugged fighting attire, which allows him to do battle with the poachers in the rough jungle. Should be rough, steamy jungle. Jungle Fighting Jack is armed with his harpoon bolo uh, with landmine to thwart the evil poachers. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's out there trying to get it done. You know what I'm saying? And now we're going to come to the last, but definitely not least, Jack Cadillac Tender. Master Mechanic. He's got his Nitro Express launcher. He's got his tattoo. You know what I'm saying? He's also got the Machinato Vitae symbol on his uh, shirt. So did Mustafu. Um, he's got a knife. You know, there's actually a lot of a lot of good detail happening here. Um, he's got his knife there and everything like that. And, and this is how you're going to see him in the show. 
Uh, in the, in the comics, he's generally kind of like just a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. Um, but you know, they spice they spiced him up a little bit for the show. Jack Cadillac Tenric. Jack is part warrior, part shaman, and all hero. And that's also another. That's like a huge thread um, through Cadillacs and dinosaurs because he is like an old. They call them the old blood mechanics. He's like a shaman, um, and he basically works uh, with the Griff. And they are like these like kind of in between like dinosaurs and human, like lizard men. But they're you know all very wise, and they keep to themselves, and they try to. Uh, stay hidden from humans, like, you know, their whole culture and everything like that. And Jack is kind of like a, the go-between to keep the balance, you know, between the dinosaur life and, and nature, the new the new encroachment of humans back onto the, the planet's surface. So yeah, he's capable of fixing all vehicles of the ancients. Jack can usually be found freeing animals from traps, battling evil poachers, or in his amazing high-tech garage with, where he repairs his classic 1953 Cadillac convertible. In battle, he uses awesome weapon, the Nitro Express, to battle those whose goal it is to destroy nature. All right, now we're going to get into the vehicles. Boom. Here we are. Hammer's tri-bike. Got, got that great logo. Love it. All the box art was actually pretty cool for its time. Like, has that, like, airbrushed, you know, look to it. And uh, I'm a big fan. Also, as, as you notice, all the figures not opened. Not open. Look, Toys R Us, $4.98. This was clearly some kind of blowout, you know. But yeah, nothing, nothing open. This is sealed, you know, tighter than a nun at church. So we got the features here. Harpoon missile launcher shoots three dino piercing arrows, two rear wheel tire slashers that double as missiles. Dinosaur skull hood ornament holds two classic figures sold separately. Um, but this is really cool, like, um, you know, again, has the spring-loaded missiles and everything like that. This is the cool gold and green kind of Serpentor's Chariot color scheme. Uh, yeah, really cool. You know, again, all still nice and sealed and uh, safe safe from prying hands and eyes. Um, and then, boom, we got the glider. Jack's glider with grabbing claws and boulder bombs. And this is a pretty cool, you know... Kind of pterodactyl style glider. Also, again, everything never been opened. All still sealed. Children out there crying right now, begging a man to open these figures and let them play with them. And I say no. Now it's got grabbing claws. A high flying vehicle that drops boulder bombs. Claws can grab figures or dinosaurs. You know, it's not. Uh, I'm gonna hold one figure or two if you're picking up a figure and or a dinosaur. Uh, but yeah, these are all great, like all the stickers and everything like that. Like, you know, someday these will all count their boxes and be beautifully displayed. But until then, let's look at the next figure. So here we're coming up on why my almost complete collection is almost complete. And it's one of the dinosaurs. We're, got, we're looking at the Triceratops here with giant boulder launcher. You know, pretty cool art here. Look at that grass. Damn. It's grass, son. We'll flip them over. And again, Dino Riders fans rejoice. They have reused some of these molds and uh, just made them different colors and stuff like that. Different um, weapon and armor, but from what I understand, they just you, just reuse these molds. It's got a giant boulder launcher that catapults massive boulders into the battle against the poachers. See, the dinosaurs are getting in there. You know, he's got a brain box, got a boulder launcher. Pretty cool. Big fan. Big fan with a man with a plan. All right, and now we're coming to the last, the last, and yes, yes it is. It is Jack's Cadillac. Beautiful. See, we've got Hannah there, looking how she normally looks, long flowing hair, trying to grab at Jack, keep him in the vehicle as they're at the edge of the cliff, always in the, the, the precipice. Fires two souls from the front bumper. Trunk reveals a net trap launcher, side lava gun. In the comics and stuff, they're never really guns. They're they're more like canisters for filtering and running the vehicle and stuff like that. But in, in the toy, they made them guns. You know, that's fine. I'll let it slide this time. Holds two figures. Unless you're putting some of these figures in the trunk, if you know what I'm saying. Maybe you don't. Um, but yeah, great, great, great toy. Uh, it's super slick. It's probably one of the coolest... Uh, 
you know, outside of a mask vehicle. This might be one of the coolest uh, figures of this era, you know, just as far as vehicles and stuff go in the 90s. Uh, big fan of it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get to now why these are all still sealed. And if it, keen, keen-eyed viewers might have said to themselves, well, I see some other guy on here. And you're right. It's this dude right here. This Kentosaurus. We'll, we'll get him up under the camera here. Kentosaurus. Look at this guy. He is also a dino rider. Now, this guy is what's keeping all these things in boxes. And this this will this will get into my personality as a human being. I refuse to open these until I have all of them and can display them properly. That's right. That's how, that's how I live my life. So I have all these figures still in box for years now, waiting to find a complete box version of this Cantosaurus so that I can open them and display them. And now I hear you saying to yourself, but there's other things on this box. This Jack's Garage, to my understanding, has never been released. It, it's got a prototype, but they never released it. I've never seen it anywhere other than in some like trade ads or whatever. So there might be one sitting in some dude's garage somewhere where it was at a show, like a, you know, like a toy fair or, a, you know, some kind of trade show. Uh, same with the Nitro Express. I've never seen it in the wild. I've never seen one listed on eBay or any kind of sites. It just looks like a Nerf gun. So my understanding is neither of those have ever released. All I need is the Kentosaurus and I have a complete package and then they'll be displayed. And there was never any, like, you know, they never made a, um, any f figures for a uh, Wilhelmina Sharn horse or any of the other things like that. that they just ended. I don't know if it's because the show ended or the toys weren't doing as well as they thought or, or what, but, um, yeah, the, the garage and the gun never came out to my knowledge. And if they did, they were in such limited release that no one has basically. But to my understanding, you know, like, you know, as best as my internet sleuthing can uh, acquire, the Gradge never actually made it to production, neither did the gun. But I've seen, I've seen the dinosaur, the Kentosaurus, and I plan to acquire him one day. And until I do, these guys will remain in the boxes, you know? So with all that said, and all these toys still remaining unopened, if you like what I ranted and raved about here, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, grab a drink on your way out. See you next time. Later. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a little unboxing video. We're going to open up some Kamen Rider 50th Anniversary figures. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the figures we have here are Kamen Rider Double, or W, and Kamen Rider Deno. I'm going to grab my trusty Fat Max X-Acto knife, and we're going to pop them open. We'll grab the double first. I'm going to be the guy who opens these from the bottom. Uh, but yeah, these are um, the Heroes Brave statue figure, Kamen Rider Cyclone Joker. And, uh, you know, we'll remove this tape here. We see what these guys are like, what so the quality is. See how much trouble I've gotten myself into by starting to collect things uh, that I don't really need. But, you know, we'll see. So, well, check that box down there. And I don't even know if there's any actual... Pull this down here. Um... Let's pull them out here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's a base appears to be in this bag here. Uh, we got the figure. Oh, we do have to put them together. All right, I wasn't sure. So he is in a little baggie. And he's pointing. He's got his little antennas. He's got some style, some sass. Let's just rip this sucker open here. Oh. All right, so we have... We have his hips and legs, and uh, we'll pull him. He is in here. Like they've they've sealed, they've sealed the bag in three little sections. All right, let's just rip him open by his head here. And we'll take him out. They're less less figure and more statue. 
possibly an in-action figure, if you will. Um, he just mm, he just clamps together there. He looks pretty cool. They're good size. They're like, I don't know, like they appear to be like a six inch. This little scarf that he would have that kind of flows in the wind. Common Rider Double, or W, however you prefer to call it, has kind of this interesting premise where there are two people in the suit, and it's kind of detective-themed. Um, so yeah. Um, oh, let me get the base here. I'll open that. The base seems pretty simple. It's also one of those situations where they love to just bag everything up separately, which is kind of odd. I can understand if it was painted where they might be worried about things getting scuffed or rubbing together or whatever, like the the body. But yeah, it has this little kind of pegged peg standee thing. And then this goes on it. I guess that's just to stabilize them because it's not really going to hold the figure. I guess it just would go around his leg. That's kind of weird. I'm not sure why you'd want that, but... We'll just, we'll just throw him on the thing here that he's supposed to be on. They've cleverly biggened the holes on one side so you know where he's supposed to stand. Squeeze him in here. Yeah, so that is him with his little stand. He looks good. I dig him. Um, yeah, we're going to open the other one. So yeah, no, the detail and stuff on them is actually quite impressive you know, for the price of the figure. And but yeah, they don't have any they don't have any posability. They're they're straight up just in action figures or statues, whatever you want to call them. But yeah, we'll open we'll open Deno again. Mask Rider Deno, Common Rider Deno. Common means mask, just so you know. And so there are and some a lot of these figures. Um, I was looking them up online, and there are. Their alternate forms, like if they have like a an upgrade, or if they learnt a new power, their armor changed, or whatnot, they have a few alternate versions. Like there's a gold version of this guy. And, you know, I was looking online. I'll, I'll probably pick up more of these things because <laughs> uh, big common rider fan. The games and comics and stuff like that. So and the TV shows. All right. So yeah, we got. In there. Oh, and we got some, I'll show you some shots in the back too. Like the back has like a full kind of detail breakdown. But yeah, they're pretty cool. All right, so toss that box away. And then we have to do some, some origami honey to pull that out there and toss that away. I think we got everything, yep. All right, so he comes in the bag like this and is all, all split up. Focus, we're in and out of focus here. We're wilding camera wise here. God damn these bags. These bags, bags, bogs. All right, so we got his hip section. We'll slap him down here. It's kind of funny because, like, they're just like mini statues the more I kind of handle them, but they're, they're well painted and really well detailed. We'll take all this. Wrapping oh emotional damage That's cool. Let's slide this back on there. Okay, so we just jam him in here. They got these really big like pegs to put them together. But yeah, he's pretty dope. A little deno action, sword version. Yeah, there's like a lot of detail in these guys. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. From pose here, I'm going to grab his little stand just so I'm complete on this. Uh, and his foot just goes in here. Weird. I guess, like, if you think if you're going to put him someplace where he might be unstable, he just kind of has this little. I guess it's some kind of rock or crystal thing he'd be standing on. Puts his foot in. 
But yeah, these guys are pretty cool. I'm, I'm a fan. They'll both be proudly displayed in the background where you can't see them because it's so bullery. See some people complain about that, and I think that's funny. That's intentional. But yeah, here we go. Both these guys are really great. I can't really complain for the price. They're like, I think they were like 20 bucks each. And I just happened to be in a store and seen them and grabbed them. I was like, oh, these look fucking cool. So yeah. But yeah, both of these, really great. Pretty sure I'll be uh, collecting more of them, which is unfortunate for my wallet, but great for you. If you want more of these videos, I guess it is. Kamen Rider Double, Kamen Rider Deno, coming at ya. Alrighty. Alright, that's gonna do it for me. Quick little video on some Kamen Rider 50th Anniversary figures. If you've liked anything you saw here today, including me, smash that like button, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, share it out in social media, let your mom know about these figures so she can buy them for you. Bye-bye. See you next time. I'm out. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to do some unboxing. We're going to unbox these Power Rangers Cross TMNT Lightning Collection. Uh, we get the Morph Leo and the uh, Morphed uh, Donatello, proving that he is the blackest turtle. All right. But yeah, let's jump into it. Okay. Now that we have the box in hand, I am pulling out my trusty Stanley Fat Max to dig into these bad boys. All right, so let's see what we got here. Got some nice packaging. Uh, I guess we'll cut it here. Ooh. And we'll go from there. All right, let's slide this puppy open. See what we can get out of here. Oh, destroying the box, you know. Slide them all out. The box over here. We'll pull Leo out first. You know. See how it goes. See what I can grab him by. Or push from behind is probably the easiest way. We get some little noisy ASMR. Mother of God. Okay. We have freed Leo. Um, they're actually pretty cool. The, um... The belts and stuff like that are plastic, like kind of over top, you know, loose, loose kind of deal. They're pretty cool, though, pretty uh, well articulated. Not too shabby. We'll get the camera to kind of focus in on him. But yeah, he looks pretty good. You know, Leonardo, Blue Ranger. Uh, we'll grab his side. Well, they're actually supposed to be swords, I guess. Little, uh... Little short, but you know. You know how it is. Uh, we'll throw the swords in each hand, see what it looks like. Just a little item in there, I guess. My god. Everything just... wants to get in there, but not in there. You know what I'm saying? I want it in there, but I'm not sure it wants it in there. Oh, there we go. There we go. So he's pretty cool. He's got his weapons. We'll stand him up here. He can look on as uh, I pull his head out of here. And uh, I can only imagine at how hard and or easy. Let's zoom in. There we go. Uh, it may be to get this head off. Let's see. Oh, okay. That was incredibly easy. I was expecting a tug of war that perchance might end my life. Let's see if we can get it on just as easy. Probably not. Oh, there we go. So yeah. So there we go. Good old Leo. Yeah, these are pretty cool. Um, I don't normally pick up a lot of stuff like this. Um, but they were really cool. Like I was just like, oh, kind of a really bizarre crossover, like turtles. And Power Rangers. Um, so yeah, I grab them. Uh, we're gonna jump over here and see what kind of tormented hellscape 
Can you just... Oh, yeah. Yep, you got out of this box. Wow. Wow. Okay. We've got Donatello, our friendly Black Ranger. Um, the sculpts are pretty good. I mean, they're both the same. They're just kind of repaints. Um, you know, except for the helmets. You know, he's kind of got the Mastodon-esque helmet there. You get it to zoom in. But yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty well uh, detailed. I dig it. Um, yeah, we'll pull his head off too. And uh, that's kind of the weird thing about um, Donatello is he usually has like his bow staves. And uh, here they kind of gave him like the axe and more like a spear with him. Oh, God. There we go throw his head on here. Oh, he on there. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. He's got the goggles. They do nothing. Yeah, that's pretty good. I dig it. And uh, we'll grab their weapons here. And they got a bunch of extra hands and some some powers. You know? We'll, we'll throw these axes in. Kind of more like a extended axe, and he's got a shorter axe here. Or does it turn into a gun? Who can say? Yeah, it looks like a gun. You know, Black Ranger with his axe gun. Did it actually transform or do anything? It doesn't seem like it. Right? Alright, throw that in his hand. Got the gun with the trigger. So you hold it like this. We'll see, see how it all goes. They do have multiple hands, so, you know, me just jamming these in their hands here. But yeah, he looks pretty good. Zoom in. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at the uh, other hands here. They got a couple, like everything, there's a whole bunch of hands. Um, nothing terribly exciting. You know, open hands. Closed hands, fists, and then there's some um, energy bursts that they get. Um, I believe it shows on the box. And these things right here. Um, yeah, there's more energy bursts here. I'm gonna, I believe it shows on the back of the box here. Yeah, the, uh, the energy burst goes on. The axe. You give it a... Uh, See what it looks like on the back of the box here. Um, yeah, I guess it goes on like this. Uh -huh. Got like this little energy burst thing that goes on the bottom or the top of the blade so that it's aiming with fiery energy. Um, and then Leo's swords as well also have this kind of weird goopy mesh lightning. Um, yeah. You know. And there we go. But yeah, I think that's going to do it. Uh, they're pretty cool. They'll they'll find a place on my, my shelves. And uh, look forward to more unboxing videos. Uh, with our friends from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cross Power Rangers universe. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Uh, if you like everything you see here, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and uh, yeah, share it out on social media, tell your mom about it, all that fun stuff. We'll see you next time. All right, bye. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at another Power Rangers Cross TMNT Lightning Collection. This time we're looking at a good old Morph Shredder, and uh, we're going to jump into it. Let's go. That was five dreams ago, five dreams ago. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, so again, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. You know, it's all pretty cool. Um, got a little tab here. 
But yeah, we're gonna find out where we can cut this puppy open. Here we go. And again, enter the trusty Fat Max by Stanley. Uh, we'll pop you open here. And away we go. See if we can open this box here without ripping it, you know. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that at all. Um, hmm, it's very stiff. That's what she said, you know what I'm saying? All right, so we'll pull on. Good old Morph Shredder. And so it's basically like the Green Ranger and Shredder kind of combined. Um, toss this over here. And so, yeah, we've got a pretty good look at him here. He's got some extra hands um, that, are, that are in fists. Mr. Fisto. And uh, yeah, he's got one, one for each hand. The um, sharp blades here are, you know, kind of a rubbery plastic, same as the fists. Uh, we're going to pop them out. These guys seem to... Oh, that huge came out way easier than the other ones did. Um, so he's got, he's got a cloth cape. It's got some rips in it, some shreds out of it, if you will. Um, the detail's actually really good. Yeah, the uh, kind of little nicks in the mask and everything like that. But yeah, it's a really cool kind of combination of Shredder and uh, Tommy the Green Ranger. Um, he's got the hand all, all open. And, uh, yeah, his head doesn't, like, he doesn't have a mask or anything underneath it. That's the whole, that's the whole deal. Let me get that to zoom in there. But, yeah, it looks pretty good. Can't really complain. It's got a nice little plastic belt, similar to the other turtles' belts. Um, but, yeah, he's re he's really good. They're, they're really poseable. Uh, a lot of, a lot of tweaking that you can do with them and ankles for posing and stuff like that. Um, and I do like when they have a nice little rocker ankle there. But yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, he's also got... Uh, these are taped in, but not overly taped in. So we'll pull the, the effect out and see how that kind of goes. Well, it looks like they just slide in. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of neat that they gave these like little kind of powered up special effects. For all the characters so far. But yeah, like the, the sculpt is really good. He's, you know, really poseable. Uh, I'm pretty impressed. You know, he's going to go up on the shelf with uh, Leo and Donnie. And uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. I'm I'm really impressed with them overall. Uh, he, comes with, he comes with another one. Like I said, he has the two fists. Um, but yeah, it's short and sweet. Morph Shredder. A.K.A. Shredder and uh, the Green Ranger morph together. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for me for this quick little unboxing and quick look at uh, Morph Shredder. Uh, if you like everything you've seen here, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, share it out, and all the social medias, you know, all the fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for me. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to unbox these Power Rangers Cross TMNT figures. April O'Neil, Michelangelo, Pink Ranger, Yellow Ranger. Let's get into it. Let's go. I've got my trusty Fat Max. You know what time it is. Let's get into it. Um, find the tape here. We're going to cut it. Sorry, from trusty Fat Max. I'm going to toss the Fat Max over here because it's done its job. Now we're going to get right in here. All right. Well, we'll slide these guys out here. And uh, if you remember last time, like, they all had, like, energy weapons and a bunch of extra hands and stuff like that, switching the heads. Uh, April Leo's got a microphone there and a camera. So, yeah, we're going to pop these guys out. Okay. We got Mikey. He looks pretty cool. I like the Yellow Ranger. I like the the hat. Yeah, like I said, like these guys are actually all pretty well articulated. There's a lot of posability. Um, they're very stiff though, right out of the box. You can you can pose them. You can do fun, cool things with them. I like to switch their heads, see what they look like. 
We got a bunch of cool hands. Let's pop this guy's head off. We'll set it there. But yeah, they all have like this kind of rubber belt. Grab Mikey's head here. Ooh, it's kind of hard to pull through the thing here, but we'll see how easy this goes on. They well, they usually go on pretty easily. Snap it in here until it makes a sound. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Mikey looks pretty good. I like it. I like it. Let's see what he's got here. He's got some chucks. Pop these out. That's pretty cool. I can't complain. These figures have all been really solid. Yeah, I'm just kind of impressed with them. Let's get them to hold them both together. You know how it is. But we'll get it. We'll get them in. It's because that's what you demand. Okay. So yeah, he's got the chucks. He can hold them. He can do the Bruce Lee. Oh. Oh. He's got it down. I'm gonna grab April here. All right. So she's out. It's actually real. I, I wonder if they used a pre-existing Pink Ranger figure because it's actually a pretty good sculpt. She got the gun. She slips on the side. The helmet and stuff. Yeah, they're really good looking figures. And the scales, scales good. Uh, let's pop her head off. Oh, there we go. All right. Now we're going to grab her head. It's actually a really good sculpt. Like, I like it. I like it a lot. You know? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Like, I don't know, sometimes you can get these really, like, ugly head sculpts, and you're just kind of like, what is happening? But yeah, I dig that. It does not look bad at all. He looks like a news reporter. But yeah, it looks good. I like it. And yeah, we got a bunch of accessories here. Like, they all had the, um, what, what would you... My god. There we go. All the weapons and stuff have these cool kind of energy effects on them, like for the nunchucks and stuff like that. Oh, the camera. The camera's pretty cool. Like, it's there's some neat little props with them that they didn't have to do. Get this mic out here. Oh, it's taped in. I was like, what the? All right. I'm getting the full unboxing experience here. Here we go. But yeah. All, all the... Uh, pieces are actually really well done. Put the, the mic in her hand here. You can interview you can interview him just like, hey yo, what's up dog? You'd be like, oh nothing. You know? Yeah, they're pretty cool. Um again, got a bunch of hands, open hands, closed hands. She's got a bow and she's also got a couple hands. She's got a kung fu karate chop hand arrow, the gun, got kind of a, a laser bolt kind of thing with the arrow. Um, yeah, we'll pop these out. Yeah, they look pretty good. It actually um, can kind of hold stuff. I like that. That's pretty cool. Put the gun in her pocket. Yeah, again, I've, I've been really impressed with these figures, and so... I keep getting them. But yeah, I I really find it hard to complain about them. The sculpts are nice. Everything is well painted. Everything looks really good. Got a lot of accessories. So yeah, I think it's another big win for these. You know, they have all their little energy burst effects like they did in the previous ones. He's got the camera. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, I'm going to say it's another solid two-pack. They'll go up on my shelf. They'll look pretty cool. Yeah, there's not really much more to say. Like, you know, they're they're just solid figures. I, I really can't complain about them. They're really poseable. The joints are kind of stiff, but I mean, that's kind of to be expected out of the box. But yeah, they're, they're pretty solid. Yeah, that's going to do it for me. If uh, you liked everything you've seen here, like, comment, subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications. 
and we'll see you next time. Alrighty, everybody. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do an unboxing. We've got a BotCon exclusive Last of the Seekers in this box right here. So, yeah, we're going to open it, have a look at it, see what we think. Let's jump into it. Let's go. Okay, so here we are. Box. Trusty Stanley Fat Max. In hand. All right, let's get rid of me. Go full. All right, so we've we've removed all the uh, packaging accoutrement. We're gonna jump right in here, cut this bad boy open, and uh, yeah, hopefully there's no other paperwork in here, and we can just get to it. Oh, there there be slide this paper out. Oop. They are thanking me. And there is... God damn, that was expensive. Anyway. Alright, we'll get back into it here. We're, we're going to unbox our Majestic Renegade. And I'll throw all this stuff over here. We'll pull him out. And uh, we'll toss all the rest of the contents over here. He is looking quite good. See what we got. Got some nice packaging here. Seeker looks pretty good. We'll flip it over here. There we go. We have Max. Got sh the Shadow Drone. We got the Renegade, and we've got Surge. Um, thankfully, we're not taped on any of these sides, so hopefully we can just slide this open without doing too much damage. Like I said, BotCon exclusive. Let's pop this puppy open here. Slide it. I do like that it looks to be all pretty much resealable. Here's the instructions. We'll we'll see. We'll see how much we need those. You know, I'm gonna pop this stuff out here. Set this all over here. Um, I like that. Like a lot of the packaging and stuff is really nice. It's really I like that, you know? Really slick. We can shine it around the studio. Um alright, let's pull this sword and all its weapons just fall right out all right um i guess we'll just dump everything we'll just dump everything and see how it goes put everything over here we've got a gun it's white looks pretty cool uh we've got two smaller machine gun uzi style guns Pull them over there we've got two swords kwa ching we have, I don't know what this is, but I'm sure it's important. Uh, and then we have what I assume is part of the jet uh, when he transforms. Oh, and it does open. Oh, it turns into a shield, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we've got that. We won't, we won't go too wild with it, you know, but we can, we can clearly see that it's, it's got uses. Uh, we look at the robot. Um, it looks pretty cool, you know, just as a robot. The kind of purple, red, white, yellow kind of motif happening here. My first instinct as a human on planet Earth is to just start transforming it. I mean, so far, just like looking at it, it seems to have like a decent build quality. Like it's like, it's like, you know, it looks pretty clean. See, all right. Let's let's see. Let's let's just see how uh, if if we can figure this out without looking at the instructions. That's been my joy as a human on planet Earth. Okay, we'll pop these missiles out here, and maybe I'll time lapse this part. You know, maybe I won't. We'll see. We'll see how how many moons it takes us to get there. Three hours later. Now, where do I fold? Oh God. My foot came off. I guess I'll snap that back on. You know, uh, it's good that it's got ball joints. I'll tell you that for free. We'll see if we can snap this back on. You know, live demo, folks. Live demo. Man, maybe I should have packed a lunch. 
I will say it is one of the least obvious. Like typically when you look at transformers and stuff like that, you kind of just go, hey, he folds this way and he folds that way. I'll start singing Holy Diver here in a second. This is a godforsaken torment. I'll tell you that for free. Do, 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 do. Wow, this is like a fucking nightmare. God damn. I'm gonna take my pants off before this is done. That's right, I'm determined to never look at these instructions. We're, we're close. I can, I can taste it. I can taste the success. Can you, can you taste the success? Right, like what? What sweet demonistic hedonist hell have we all found ourselves in? That's the way that this goes. My god, this thing is far more complex than it ever needed to be. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Knock three times. Holy diva! Time to get away, get away. This just come off. See, that's the thing, like, a lot of the Transformers, the parts just rolled inside. Do these hide inside here somehow? Okay, they do. I do find it weird that they're, they're pegged like that, though. If they go inside, why don't they just go inside? You know? Let's be honest here. This is kind of wild. Like this ball joint just flopping around in here. This fist. Yeah, my, my one critique is like that just falls off. It just like kind of just falls off, you know? You would think it wouldn't just fall off. Yeah, I don't know, this is a bit different than I was expecting it to be, just as far as like layout and design for the, the robot. Like I feel like it's just overly complicated for the sake of being overly complicated. Like not for displayability or playability. And I know the reality is, is that the majority of people buy this are going to be like middle-aged collectors who are like, hey, I have nostalgia for Transformers, so I'm going to buy one. The nostalgia for a lot of those things, like if you go look at like an original Starscream or a lot of these guys, they transform really easily. Let me just take the wing and turn it and stand them up and pull the piece down and that's the chest plate and... I feel like my time would be better spent and more enjoyed if I had already had this as a plane right now. Yeah, it just feels like needlessly complex for the sake of complexity. No, I can't say that's that's a big win or anything. Right? Like, hold on for a second. Okay, see this guy? This is a custom star scream that I have made from a, uh, a Vector Prime, right? I take the sword out of his hand, right? He's, he's a robot, you see him? He's a robot, right? You know, we got some things that go up here. The, the feet slip down, you know, you turn his head, right? Like this is, this is really simple. Look, we're, we're already seeing a plane. Right, like these flip over, these come back. Right, like this is like I'm not taking parts off. I'm not like, right, like it's it's really straightforward. It's really simple. Right, like these clip up there. Like all you, all your shapes are just really simple. And you, you very, very quickly get a plane out of it, right? Like, in a fraction of the time, you know, I'm like, hey, 
whichever you know whichever and this has these wings where you can bend them up or put them out like a like a tie fighter or flat leave them flat you know and but like very quickly you have a plane you have a it went from vehicle to robot in a matter of moments right and it like shoots a missile and everything right like it's it's just really simple it's a really simple toy and then if i want to go back to the robot but yet like there's a ton of detail in it right and so you very easily are able to transform it put it back to the to you know the way it was back on back on your shelf and that's it like it's it's like very straightforward and it bends its knees and it can it's posable um it doesn't have any kind of rocker ankle or anything like that but it's really straightforward and it's like just enjoyable to transform and look at and this is painted like this is hand painted this thing was like a white color when i got it and i did the whole star scream motif on it right like dry brushed it the whole thing like it's got paint on it and it's still very easy to transform right it's not getting scuffed up it's not doing anything like that right and then so we're here with this and this has like all these little folds and all this little thing when literally the legs just could have flipped up the arms could have came down and i could be enjoying it you know what i'm saying like i should be like going like like you know like hey i've got a plane like fucking 20 minutes ago, right? And I'm probably going to edit a bunch of this down, but goddamn, this thing is just not straightforward. And sure, I'm, after I transform it like five or six times, but you, you can't just give this to a kid, right? Like a little kid is going to fucking, like look at how small all these little like pins and stuff are. Like it's kind of, it's kind of wild. Just as a guy who like, like, you know, I'm not sitting around, like, playing with these things and going, brr, brr, brr. but you know what I mean? Like, I just put that on a shelf, and that's it. Like, you know, and I'm just like, hey, this looks cool. Ta-da! This is harder to find that, like, little piece of, like, ta-da! And I don't think it's bad. Like, it's, like, uh, taking my twists and turns and tugs and pulls and and all that business like I haven't broken it yet like it's cool like the the whole idea of it's cool and it's cool that there's a comic and all that other stuff but where the fuck am i supposed to the world has turned and left me here just where i was before you appeared in this place an empty space you know to fill the void yeah yeah like that like that's my that's my biggest complaint about this just as as a a curio uh oh look i got this kind of cool starscream-esque third-party transformer i'm no stranger to them and so i'm kind of like most of them aren't this complicated either like a lot of the third-party ones so i'm just i don't know i'm kind of torn on it's usability, versatility, any kind of long-term kind of usage. The more I'm dicking around with it, the more like kind of like annoying I find it, to be honest. Yeah, like that that's that's my initial my first blush. My hey, I just pulled this thing out of the box and I'm trying to make it into a toy. I'm like, damn, this is annoying. To put together space the final frontier like i feel like we're just a few turns away from having a a vehicle that looks like a ship you're right there but there's just some magical nuance some cryptic father to come in and be like you haven't seen the last of me yet no right but yeah it just it just 
This this reeks of being overly complicated for the sake of being overly complicated. But you know, I haven't broke it yet, so. Okay. There we go. Those that all transforms into this tiny little thing. Um, it all folds up. Never to be unfolded again. Ba ba ba. I feel like that's the, the linchpin to the whole situation. Right? That this goes in. Alright. I'm a broken man. Emotional damage! I'll look at these stupid instructions so that I can have this as a plane and not hate my very existence for the rest of my time here. Let's just look at the part of the legs where it becomes legs right like look at this like seriously right this says everything that needs to be said this way too complicated for its own good right like this is this is side one this is side one what we're step step 19 and then we still have to flip this puppy over and by step 40, we may be lucky enough to find ourselves in plane mode. You know what I'm saying? After we've unlocked a fucking thousand year door here, almost at peak jet. After 11 billion hours of figuring this shit out. Okay. Got somewhat of a plane on landing gear. Plane. Come out or anything? Oh, it comes out. Hooray. All right. It was driving me fucking crazy. Like, what is happening here? All right. You know, we've got it we've got it transformed into a plane. I take it this is like oh this is with the alternate head, the renegade head. So yeah. Oh we'll throw the, the missiles. Um, like pretty short, uh, you know, compared to the one that's in the other guy. All right, we'll pop these in here. Um, yeah, like the the way it goes on, or maybe these turn. Um, yeah, it shoots the missile. I would call the most locking in of mechanisms. Oh, this rotates, making huge portions of my anger uh, subside just slightly. Except for the part where this missile doesn't want to lock in. And that's continuing to keep my anger high. Um, yeah. You get to come off. This thing rotates. My god. Um. So that makes that a thousand times less annoying. Right? For the missile thing, the fin is still on the top. Right? So. If you have it this way on the outside, it doesn't really rotate. Oh, it it also rotates, or did I just break it? Oh, it does. It just it just pins in. All right, all right. Some of my anger <laughs> has subsided. Yeah, I like I said, like I still think like 
it's just overly complicated for the sake of being overly complicated. Like if that's the if that's the thing I could drive home, that would be it, right? Like if if people are looking for legitimate, honest feedback, because it, it like here's the thing too, like the more complicated, the more parts and stuff that this has, the more it costs to make. The more molds you have to make, the more pieces you have to make. So like this thing could be a fraction of the complication and probably be just a better, more playable toy. Like that would be my like straight up thing. Like I just like, that's the thing. I just don't want to sit here for, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure after I transformed it a few times, it would, it wouldn't take nearly as long, but like at the same time, I'm just kind of like, just give me a really simple toy. Like none of the transformers, like even a lot of the newer ones weren't that crazy difficult, right? Like you just kind of want a really straightforward, simple, cool looking toy. So yeah, we're, we're in jet mode and it, it looks pretty good. You know, I like, I like the color scheme. Yeah, we'll, we'll transform it back and then we'll end the video. How about that? Like that mechanism seems kind of wonky, but whatever, whatever. Um, we'll take this off. Like, see, like, and we'll just kind of go, hey, let's see how this goes. We'll bring him back to a robot. See how wild and crazy the, the reverse process is. Now that I've kind of done it once. Like, see, like, this is kind of like, you know. Kind of. Yeah, like, I, I don't like that. I don't like pin inside a pin like just that fist should and unless you're having multiple fists but then why isn't this part of that plastic i don't know maybe maybe there's a very like incredibly good reason for it but like it also they don't have any like there's not really because the joint is inside there the hand doesn't have really much posability at all like right if you're gonna put a, like a gun in his hand you know, it's just, he's holding it and then the hand comes off. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like, that's kind of my issue with it. Like, it's, it's not even for posability sake, that joint in this space needed to be bigger for you to be able to do anything with his hand. And because it, it just wants to, it just wants to come off the whole time. It's interesting. I just, I don't know. I just would prefer just a straight up simpler robot guy. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm the odd one here who doesn't want to spend 20 minutes, you know, transforming their robot. Yeah, I just want cool things that are functional, I guess would be the, the, the way I'm, I'm looking at it. Like, see, like, it's weird. I do like this ball joint, like swivel ankle joint, but if it's going to keep popping off every time I just go to transform it. That's less enticing. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I think I'm more a fan of the idea of this than the execution of it, if I'm being perfectly honest. Oh, and there's his mask piece fell off. All right. I get you how do I get you up here there we go we'll slide you through we'll put your little grill mask piece back on you know he just kind of slaps back in there um, be here it's like it's just fiddly. Like it's like annoyingly fiddly. You lock in, you lock in. Twist and put your arms down. Yeah, let's flick this one out. You know. Yeah, I don't like this ball joint with the hands. 
and the pin. Just not a fan. You know? Right? And like, he's got multiple of these pins that kind of det detract from him being transformable and solid. Right? Because if I'm pulling these out and putting them back in, instead of it just having the little notches already in it or clipping in. And I think that comes down to like how complex they are. Like when they don't really need to be. But yeah, like see, like it's just like there's a real fiddly unsolidness. And this cradles it. Cradles the missiles. Cradles them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cradles them. Cradles the missiles. Put a sword in his hand. Gonna be excited about his sword fighting antics. He's got these other bits in the back. Got a sword, he's got a gun. He does have an alternate head. Let's pop that on. Yeah, you know, see, like I'm, I'm very much in a hey, am I gonna break this guy? Kind of mode, because it's just kind of you know, I got a thousand joints I gotta push and pull and pop on and. Jesus Christ. It's fucking killing me. You know? Like, if this was just solid... But what the fuck do I know? What the fuck do I know? Jesus Christ. Alright. Let me... Put this head on. Like, it's already kind of like... Hard to put on. You're putting all this force on all these very small joints. No bueno. Jesus. Is that even supposed to go on there? Doesn't feel like it, but I got it on. All right. We supposedly got him to Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's so fucking fiddly. Like if you push on one thing, the other thing moves like nothing actually like locks into place, doesn't go Kunk, and stays there. Okay, so he's got his kind of shock wavy type head. You know, he's got his sword. Um, to readjust these because one's higher than the other because they don't really lock into place. I'm just gonna feel everything out. Oh, do I ostensibly lock it into this? Is that the is that the thing that we're going to push here? Like, see, fucking fuck. Okay, so on paper, this is supposed to lock into this. Oh, it looks like it's supposed to fit, but it doesn't really secure itself. Um, like, I feel like I'm, like, folding paper. It feels like I'm doing, like, origami and just setting things on top of it. Yeah, I, don't, I really hate that. I really hate that this is a pin that goes in the fist and it's not, like, a one 
one piece. Yeah, I just don't know. I just don't understand why this is separate when this should be part of the whole plastic. Because like, and here and here's the other thing. Like, if it just folds in, like, and I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a, somewhere along the line, somebody has a very good reason for this. If it just folds in, why is this not like a push in, a snap in joint to that, and just one piece? If this is able to turn and it's going to roll in there anyway, why isn't it more like the kind of head joint, like with the little ball on it, that uh, this the head piece is? Why isn't it just more like that on the inside there and this be one piece? If you look at the unboxing of my Turtles figures, they have a little ball on the end and it's one piece. Because if it's just going to fold in, it doesn't need to be a separate piece here. Like this doesn't need to be two pieces, but you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not making toys. I don't know, I guess. Like, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. There's a lot I like about it, but... I don't like how fiddly it is. I don't like how unsolid everything feels. And by unsolid, I mean like things don't lock into place and stay there. The second I move something, the chest comes away from the torso, you know, and I try to put the head on, the missile thing came out of the back and it's just stuff like that. Like these things need need some refinement. And, and I honestly think just simpler simpler design overall like it just there's just too much going on for even for the size of it it's a what like a five and a half six inch toy it's just kind of small and fiddly right like not like none of this snaps in it just kind of sets in right like because you just have like a groove it's just like a tongue and groove kind of thing and so it's not locking in it's just push everything together it just kind of stays there until you give it any kind of movement and then it just fucks off. Jesus Christ, get in there. That, like, that part alone where you're just like, hey, I just want it to sit where it's sitting. Like, see, like, that doesn't, like, there's not, like, a click or a, it just kind of folds and sets there in the groove. Um, let's get the missile here. We'll, we'll try to wrap this up here. Open you, hide you down to the little groove. Well, like, right? Like, it's just. Like, I just want that. Like, I just want that. I just want a solid snap. You know, everything goes click, click, click. But not really. When you go in, all right. Ostensibly, you're you're in. Till I touch another part and you just come open. All right, all right. Like there's just like a a lack of stability, a lack of solidity to it. That's kind of like off-putting. Would be my my word choice. These pose like I I do like the ankles like I do like that you can get him into some wild poses you know because of this rocker and the ball joint here um, on the foot you know that's pretty cool I will say that put these missiles in here I just don't want to lock in. The other one shot over here somewhere. Oh, there you are. Duh. So we got the missiles in. He's got a gun in his hand. He's got a sword. Got extra heads, extra guns. This gun fits in here. You know, if everything else didn't shoot off. And I tried to put it in. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty neat. But yeah, just as far as functionality, it's just overly complicated. If 
for for what it is. I don't know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel and it doesn't have to be this complex, like to just function. And this shield somehow goes on the arm. I'm not quite sure where it rests or how it sits. There we go. We've got one of his swords. He's he's ready for battle. He's got an extra head. Um, yeah, like I, like I said, he's poseable. I wish he was a little more sturdy feeling. Which he kind of locked in, or at least was like just the center part of his body or whatever was just more solid, like one big piece, or it locked better. But it just kind of it just has like a like a a flim. I'm scared to break it. Like it, had, it just has a flimsy feel when you're moving stuff around and then like, you know, like this here stuff just doesn't, doesn't snap in. It just has like a feel to it, right? Like where you're just like, well, I got to readjust it. I've got to do whatever. And then if I touch anything, everything falls off. Trying to, trying to keep them together here. These legs feel pretty solid. Like the white part of the leg here, like there's like a oomph to them. Slam down here. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. I've got three more of these coming. This is the BotCon exclusive. That seems fun. Hooray. Yeah. Like, I don't know. They're all right. I, I would just like to see, like, a simpler design going forward. Something that's a little more ease of use where I'm just like but like I, I've got a jet and then I go right and like the original the original Starscream and all those guys were really simple to transform like that they were like you know what I mean they were just they were just there was an ease of access an ease of use to them and you were just like hey I've got a transformer now it's it's a handful of steps and you're there it's not 40 steps it's not and you can just go back and forth with ease if you want to display it yeah that's that's my big problem with this like for the size of it and the complexity of it like i feel like i'm gonna break it just not just it just doesn't have a, 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 as much chunk as much oomph as i would like it to have it's not bad it's not a terrible toy but I just think as as far as if you're looking at it, you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then 20 minutes or a half hour later, you turn it to the plane. And you're like, oh, yeah, it's plane. But that 20 minutes is in the way of what I just did there with the other one. Like, you know, you just want, hey, it's a it's a plane. Hey, it's a robot. That's uh, I, that's my big critique. Like, I feel like there's some some issues with like, I just don't like the pins for the fists and stuff like that. I feel like if it was just one piece that would be better because it just doesn't it, you don't really have much like even turning it and stuff like that like it's like bumping off the rest of it so you're not really getting much range of motion to turn the hands anyway like you know what i mean like they they just come right out like that's my thing it's like it just doesn't feel sturdy things fall off it that kind of thing so yeah you know if you're gonna transform them and set them up on a shelf and then occasionally take them down it's fine but like as for something that you could play with or you could hand to a 10 or 11 or 12 year old kid to go like, hey, check this out. It, it ain't it ain't happening. Like it's just not they're going to break it. They're going to lose all this uh, the little chunks. And yeah, that's that's kind of the thing. Like you you want ease of use. You want access. Like I, I just think it being overly complicated is its biggest downfall. Like I just didn't even seeing it. Like I just didn't realize it was this complex to transform. Cause I, I just figured just it being just straight up like a, a small independent third party transformer. I, I, I just honestly figured it would be a more simpler design, cleaner design than this. It's just, it's yeah, it's just kind of more complicated than I, you know, I, I think that's the thing I'm trying to stress. It's more complicated than it needs to be. Um, yeah. All right. 
But yeah, if you've got some coming and and this looks good to you, I'm not saying it's it's not cool or interesting or anything like that. But I just I do find it I do find it fiddly. I do find it loose. That kind of, that kind of thing. Okay, that's gonna do it for me. If you liked everything you've seen here, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, share it out in social media, let your mom know about it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We're trying to figure our lives out, where we went wrong, you know, who's, who's to blame, right? That's what we want to know. We want to know how we got here. That's what we want. And I'm like, I don't know. How did we get here? Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another figure unboxing for you and we're just gonna jump right into it. Let's go. All right. So as you can see, Power Rangers Lightning Cross TMNT Lightning Collection, Foot Soldier Tommy, Morphed Raph. Sadly, the Fat Max is not here today. But what will be joining us? The Swiss Tech. Yes, the Fat Max is on duty, off site, working hard. Sadly, I forgot him, but he will continue to work. But yeah, so the Swiss Miss will pop right in here. And uh, yeah, it took me a while to actually find this um, because these things came out in around 2000, I believe it was 2001. Um, yep, yeah, they are 2000. 21, I should say. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I had to hunt one down, find a good price on it, and yeah, we're going to unbox it today and show them off. Um, so this is the entire set. Uh, my previous videos had, you know, the rest of the team, April O'Neil, Shredder, you know, the whole deal. Um, so yeah, we're just going to jump in here. I guess we're going to grab Foot Soldier Tommy first. See how much, ooh, how much noise we're going to get. Oh, yeah. Come on, dog. You know? Oh, that's gonna be noisy. Okay. So we have our majestic foot soldier. Um, I do think it is kind of weird slash kind of lame that Tommy is just a foot soldier, right? No, let's get it together here, Tommy. Get your shit together. Um, yeah, kind of lame that he, he could have been, like, you know, mixed with, like, Zed or Goldar or anything like that. Let's see how hard this head is to get on. Oh, my God. Oh, there we go. You know, snag, snag. Okay. Metal gear there. Um, but yeah, it's a decent likeness of Tommy, you know. But yeah, he's got all the gear. He's got, he's got different fists. Man. Listen to all this crackle popping. Um, here's the other thing too. In in one of my previous videos, where the figure had a pin and it came out, see how this just has the pin attached, attached to the joint and would just lock in, right? So if we're just gonna throw the fist on him, right? It just, that pin locks in. It's not two pieces, it's just one piece. And we push the fist in and he's got punch and action, you know? That's just me. I'm just a guy who likes to keep it simple. So yeah, he has, and this goes on his fist. So he's he's ready to do all the fisting. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna get in there, he's gonna show Rukin, gonna dragon punch, you know how it is. So yeah, Tommy's got a katana, not a naginata. Oh, got some tape, tape in the way. You know, so he can hold, he can hold this sweet sword. But yeah, this was kind of a cool line. You know, it's just something you don't usually see is kind of these crossovers like that. So you can get the sword in here without breaking anything. You can't make any promises, you know, live demo. Um, yeah, he seems pretty solid though, right? Like it's a, for, for what it is, you know, it's just a foot soldier and, uh, Oh, we can put the sword in the little sheath back here. So yeah, that's Tommy. What do we got over here, actually? Um, is this like a mask or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a mask. Okay. What's this piece, though? It's all full of surprises. Is this supposed to be, oh, like the tuck under his chin? All right, let's, let's do the, let's do the full, full toy action here. Um, so I guess this goes here, this ring piece. And, uh, yeah, oh yeah, it fits, it fits quite well. And then this is where the mask is going to go. Put the, the head right on there. Oh, well, maybe a flip under. You even got an earring. I don't know if you can see that. We'll zoom in. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's even got an earring. You know, cool. Just little details, just weird little, you know, accoutrement. All right, so yeah, he's got the full mask. He's he is the real ninja he always wanted to be. Yeah, pretty cool. And like. Yeah, the, the, all the figures are really, really poseable. They got these nice rocker ankles, you know? And so, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased, very pleased. You know, he can get in his little stance and be like, he, uh, and you can hear him say it right now. So yeah, cool Tommy. Um, gonna pop good old Raphael out of the box here. Apologies for the crazy noises this is going to make. Oh, yeah. Oh. Please don't go, girl. Who's your favorite new kid? Call me Joey. Oh, I just knocked him over. Call me Downey. All right, so we got everyone's favorite, Raph. He's stocky. Like, he's quite chunky, you know, compared to uh, good old Tommy here. Which makes sense, you know. You know how it is, but yeah, solid. They stand well. And, uh, you know, f I'm not going to go more than five seconds. Like, I mean, obviously the head, de the sculpts and everything that are really good. Like, all the detail on these, the paints, the sculpts are really clean, really solid. Just like all the, the previous ones. I have zero complaints with them. They seem solid all the way around. Very solid all the way around, you know. So yeah, we'll we'll throw Raph's head on here. Jeez. This is this is the part that's wild. There we go. All right. So got Raph's head on there. He's looking angry as he should. Uh, he's got some size. I've got some size. La size. Um, but yeah, we'll pop him in there. Oh God. Get in there. Get in. See, this is the thing, like, I worry just a like, m my assumption with most toys is that they're going to be garbage. And so I'm kind of always, like, worried about breaking them. Because, you know, you'll spend 50 or $100 on something, and it's as fragile as a snowflake. So, okay, we got a cool Psy action happening here. Uh, he's got a little, little electric lightning. I don't know if that goes on this or on the sword. One of the two. I'll have to look at the box in a second. But, you know, and he's got the little holster for his side. Let's pop the other one out here. You know, make all that sweet noise. But, yeah, I, again, um, you know, these are just really solid. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Like, if, like I know these aren't going to be for everybody, you know. A lot of people don't care about the Power Rangers, you know, or the Turtles or vice versa. Um, but I thought they were really solid. I thought it was a really neat crossover, and I wanted to make sure um, that I had this, the whole set, you know. And uh, at some point, when I get settled in, they'll be prominently displayed. But for right now, they're pretty cool and uh, really poseable. And you know, the hands and everything. Like you got your open, get your open palm, you get your fists. Uh, we got another. These were. I thought all these were pretty cool too. Like where they have that kind of action. Glow in the dark. I don't know if this is for this or the sword. See, so they have this like, you know, power action. It's pretty cool either way. Uh, I'm just gonna look at the box here to see which one it goes on. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah. They show on the back. Tommy gets the the kind of blue ice fist thing, and the electrics on the uh, katana, and then Raph gets, you know. 
whatever that is, the power, the energy wave, um, etc. But yeah, I really like you know they're really well articulated. There's not really like a ton to like nitpick on them, right? Like they're they're really poseable. They got a lot of movement. You know, you can do you can do cool stuff with them. He can be like, oh, yeah, you know, given given kung fu kicks and sword slashes. I mean, they're gonna be just posed and stood on a shelf, but you know how it is. You know, people like to know how double jointed their knees are, all that kind of fun. But I mean, you can you can tell they're, these are pretty quality figures, you know, and they're like just really nice and, and nicely detailed, you know. But yeah, that, I, that's going to do it, you know, short and sweet. There's not a, a ton to really go over. They're just really the whole line is really solid and I'm impressed with it. I can't you know, I can't say I'm disappointed in them. You know, they're expensive because they're a little harder to track down. You know, since they're a few years old now. But yeah, I, I'm really a big fan of them. If you like them, check them out. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. If you like everything you saw here today, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. Share it out in social media. Let your mom know about it. Don't forget about her. Valentine's Day is coming up. You know what I'm saying? She's special every day of the year, not just one. Um, or that special lady in your life. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna assume you only have a mom in your life. All right. Um, but yeah, have a good one, everybody. Bye bye. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do a couple of figure unboxings. We're gonna open Common Rider Zero Two and Shin Common Rider. Let's jump into it. Let's go. All right. So we're gonna slide this guy over here. A little Common Rider Zero Two. We're gonna open this bad boy up with our trusty let's see we only got one piece of tape here no we've got three three pieces of tape they demand action all right let's get in here pop them open and uh yeah if you've seen these videos before you know that you kind of have to build these guys and they, you know they're usually in a couple pieces but um overall i've been really pleased with them the quality of them has been very very nice and uh yeah we're just gonna get into the the guts of it here more tape more tape and more tape all right let's get rid of all this and seemingly for the most part he seems to be quite intact already Okay, so his, his full body is already there. Um, he does seem to have... Oh, I guess this is like a stand, so he doesn't fall over, you know? Um, we'll cut him out. Put his head in a nice little baggie. And we'll pop it out here. Hold that up. Yeah, it looks really good. Like the the quality of these is actually really impressive. The paints and the the detail is high. Uh, he's got a good lock here. We'll lock him in. And as you can see, he's ready to go. Very dapper. Um, there was far less to do on that than I was expecting. I guess we'll just clip his leg in here. Yep, he just clips right in. That's his little stand, so he stands perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, real really cool figure. Lots of nice detail in the belt, all the gear. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But like I said, these are going to be short, so let's move on. To Shin Kamen Rider. Okay, got Shin Kamen Rider, Henshin, a go go baby. I'll slide him open as well. Gently. Oh, so gently. Oh, let's 
squeeze, no, squeeze and pull. Jeez. Gotta get that box open. Okay. Nothing else in there. All right. Get to this tape. And. Oh, see, he's in a few more pieces. There we go. All right. So, we've got a, another standee that I'm going to cut out. And I guess we'll keep going. His head is wrapped for, for safety. Just going to pull it off. Oh, yeah, he looks great. down here yeah that's pretty sweet uh, big common rider fan you know no surprise but we'll keep going here we'll get his get his pants all right now get these nice lock-in mechanisms we'll just lick them right in here yeah look at that he is he is ready to go and he also has this nice little leg hook in here okay it goes in this one it's got this really nice little stand keeps him stable you know he's not really going anywhere yeah, both of them really cool. Very impressed. They will go on my shelf. Yeah. There we go. Um, yeah, they're great sculpts. Uh, really highly detailed. Not too much I can say. They're very impressive. I'm very pleased to have both of them. And yeah, it's going to do it for me. If you like everything you've seen here today, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, share it out on social media, and uh, tell your mom about it. All right, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got another figure unboxing for you, and we're going to jump right into it. Let's go. Okay. Right here, we got the two figures. Kamen Rider Black, little uh, Urusei Yatsura aka Lum or Invader Lum as some of you may know. So we're going to jump into the Common Rider first. Get our trusty knife out here, Kniffy, and uh, pop this guy open. Away we go here. And get him from the bottom. Oh, there's another piece of tape. God damn. Pull them out here without destroying any of the box. You know, there's some good, good shots in the back, you know, you get the idea. But we'll toss them together. Oh, I don't even have to build them? What? Okay, this is new. Oh, he's got a stand. This is the first one that I haven't had to put together. What's going on here? He's just, he's just straight up figuring Already, well, all right. Let's let's pull them out. No assembly required, apparently. Um, does he swivel? No. Interesting. All right. I'm gonna get a stand out here out of the bag right quick. Man, it's gonna be way quicker than I was expecting. Thought I was gonna have to put some work in. A little stand. Toss the plastic over here. Um, yeah, so he looks pretty cool. Uh, we'll pull him up to the camera here. Yeah, he's blasting out that sweet hype energy. Yeah, really impressed with all the detail on them. His little antennae just wailing off on the wind there. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I like it. I'm a big fan. Big fan of all the detail. Yeah, he's black, so he's not 
super like picking up all the like detail in the folds and stuff like that but I can shine a light around a bit you know and then he's gonna he's gonna stand here like most of them do and it just clips right in and uh, it'll zoom in here yeah there we go and he just he just stands on it it's pretty cool it's impressive I dig it he's gonna go with the other fellow common riders yeah, big hype. Yeah, that's really cool. All right. We're going to move on to Invader Lum. Relax time with Lum. So, yeah. It's all the same here. Um, I picked up Lum. And uh, it's kind of bizarre because, like, a lot of times these, these places have a... Uh, you know, buy two, get one free, or uh, spend $70 and uh, no shipping, or something like that. So, you know, sometimes things get tacked on um, just because it's cheaper to buy something than it is to pay the shipping a lot of the times. So, you know, oh, she's actually in, oh, she's actually a lot bigger than I was expecting, right? Like, comparatively to uh, good old Common Rider Black. Uh, she's huge mungus. Um, and I believe uh, th there was an original Lum series in the 80s. Um, and so, but I believe this is for the newer one that came out in uh, 2023. Um, so there's her upper section here, torso. And then got the midsection coming out here. Um, yeah, so I've always been kind of a fan of Lum. And when I seen this this figure and was like, hey, I can just add it in for, you know, uh, less than the cost of paying the shipping. Um, I was like, yeah, I think I'll do that. We'll uh, try to slip this in here. Everything kind of snaps in. And let's see if we can kind of push her in there. Kind of locks. Um, so, yeah. There's Lum. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is like a, a stand of some kind. I'm not sure how well she stands. Oh yeah, I don't know if she stands all up great, actually. <laughs> now, that I, now that I'm trying to stand her. Um, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll cut out the uh, stand. I assume this is for her knees. Just so she can uh, stand around, sit around. Yeah, so she has a little she has a little kneely stand that kind of keeps her balanced. Um, there's no posability or anything like that, but it's actually a pretty pretty good sculpt. Um, but yeah, if you like the if you like the the look of this character, check out the anime. Um, she basically, you know, is an invader alien. Ends up having to get married to this guy and all this stuff like. Um, you know, interesting series if you like kind of like romantic comedy, slapstick comedy. Uh, that's what it is, right? So, so yeah, that's going to do it. We got Common Rider Black and Giant Lum in comparison. Uh, both really excellent sculpts. The painting's really good. Uh, all the detail, everything like that. So, yeah, pretty cool. You know, we'll... I'll lay them down here. They're, they'll find they'll find their way onto my shelf. Oh, she's getting cheeky. Cheeky. Okay, that's going to do it for me. Another successful figure unboxing. If you liked everything you've seen here today, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, share it on social media, let your mom know about it. She might like these figures. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at a pretty cool crossover collaboration between G.I. Joe and Transformers. Let's jump into it. Let's go. Jumping right in here. Little Transformers cross G.I. Joe Decepticon Soundwave, who turns into the Dreadnought Thunder Machine. Kind of stumbled upon this today. It's all factory sealed. All the, all the seals are here for this Soundwave collaboration. It has a, the GM official license product stamp on it just for the front piece of the car. I thought that was really interesting that they bothered to go that far. We're gonna cut the tape, 
pop it open, transform it, put it all together, show it off. I haven't been picking up a ton of toys lately. Sure, I've shown a few things here and there on the channel, but I'm not really a huge toy collector. Like, I, I kind of try to keep it really slim as, as to what I pick up, just because there's not a lot of shelf space, and I'd, I'd really like to kind of keep it special. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to buy a lot of junk, but I'm going to buy things that are really interesting to me. So, I'm going to pull out the old Swiss Miss. So I'm just going to give these right here a little, nice little nice little cut you know some people might be like oh you could cut the tape on the sides but I think this is kind of the gimmick you know is that the box kind of pulls apart in an interesting way and so I'm just gonna go for it like this and uh, yeah you know how it is you just don't see a lot of stuff like this so see kind of has this like pull off thing here Big Hasbro logo, G.I. Joe 2024, Soundwave, Dreadnought Thunder Machine, Hot Collab. We got the top secret action here. So yeah, I'm going to toss these out of the way. Set them down here. And uh, yeah, we're going to pop this sucker open and, and see how it goes. Cool. Okay, so we, we pop the box open here. And as you can see, Soundwave chilling here. We're going to pop everybody out. We'll, we'll cut all these. You know, we'll, give, we'll, we'll, set, we'll set Soundwave free. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I just seen this and I was like, man, I have to have this. And I just wandered. What was weird is I wandered into, like, I guess you'd call it like a pawn shop. I was like, this is cool. Here's like the front grill. We'll set all these pieces over here until we get everything out. We'll pop the old Swiss Miss across the feeder for the bullets. Um, oh, we got Ravage down here. I have to cut Soundwave out here. But yeah, I, I, I was just like, you know, stumbled upon this and was just like, what the heck? I did, like, and that's the thing. I didn't even know this thing actually existed. I just kind of was like, whoa. Because honestly, I'm not, you know, unless it's like a gem in the holograms blaster, I'm not overly keeping up with what's going on. Um, so I'm going to slide this box out of the way here. I'm going to set Soundwave down here for a second while I cut Ravage out of this box here. So you can entertain yourselves while I make these cutting noises. Okay, so we got Ravage right there. Um, uh, that there. Um, so in the box here, as you can see, is uh, Zarana. Now it's kind of hard to hard to get everything in picture here. Um, but Zarana and Zartan are in there. I'm gonna have to pull them out of the box and kind of set them over here. And uh, so. There's the enemy Zartan, and here is Zarana. And so we got our instructions on how to transform this, and we're gonna do that. All right, throw this box down here. Throw the Swiss Miss down. And so yeah, like these classic boxes and stuff, she looks kind of wild. I don't know if the, I think they have like a new like body type for them. They're like a lot smaller than and stubbier than I kind of remember them. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Got Zartan there. He's got the mask and the gun, the backpack. I always loved like I remember I used to buy the actual like you could buy basically sheets like this, but would just have weapons. And I love those. I'd buy those like crazy. We got Ravage here. Uh, I, I assume I'm just gonna pull things out, right? I'm not gonna look at instructions. This is this is Ravage. Oh yeah, there's this. That's his head. Pretty cool. All right. Let's, as I, as I once said before, as a human on planet Earth, for the most part, you should be able to transform a transformer without looking at the instructions. They should be obvious. And so, if you're making a transformable toy robot. Overly complicated for no reason. Yeah, we got problems. Okay, so this joint's come down. 
this turn. Oh, it does. Don't want to force anything too hard. But, you know, sometimes... Sometimes you just gotta go. Oh, maybe I maybe I lifted it the wrong way. There we go. No, that's right. We'll keep turning. Hold on. I don't want somebody to yell at me in the comments about how I didn't transform this properly. Whoa. Turn this. This goes forward. There we go. Okay. That's right. We're wilding out here. We're all over the place. You know. And you've got the little missile legs on the sides. There we go. See? We get there. We'll get there in the end. Hold me. There we go. Okay. We kinda we had a we had a semi a semi rough start. But we got there. Ravage looks pretty cool. We're gonna set Ravage here. We're gonna let this, we're gonna let this little guy play. We're gonna look at Soundwave here. The tape thing pops away. It could spring a little better, but it, it opens. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. I like the I like the whole oh he's got some more He's got some more string accoutrement. Let's cut that out of there. Cut this one out of here. See this is the this is live unboxing folks. We're getting rid of all the little things that would kill your cat. He's got a lot of articulation, a cockpit. This cannon turbo jet engine. Got these guns. Now, do I go for this hot instruction manual? Or do I go for it? See, like, I didn't need the instruction manual for Ravage. We got there in the end. We got there. Um, okay. We got this grill. We're going to throw it together. We did it. Look at us go. We did it. There's the grill. We're done, guys. Call of the day. The belt feed works. That's pretty cool. It's a little thing. It's a little thing, guys. It's a little thing. All the decals are on it. Everything already as well. You know? I like it. I like it. All right, let's see if we can kind of get some of this going. That looks like that goes there. Those are the wheels. Right? I've learned nothing. Believe it or not. I've learned nothing. I'm not going to look at these instructions. Like, they're kind of in front of me, but I'm going to pretend that I'm not. Right? Let's, let's get these out of here. Trash instructions? No way. If you can't transform your transformer by just kind of looking at it, seeing it, then I, I think you've done a, yourself a disservice, my friends. All right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like these little side steps. Put the Joes on. See, look, it already looks like a car. We're, we barely did anything to it. And it already looks like a car. Guys, I think that's the future. Okay, there we go. See? See how simple, elegant, sassy. All right, what do we got here? Is this going to fold this way? Oh. Oh, and his feet are the seats. That's tight. All right. All right. I'm 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 feeling this. I'm feeling what's happening here. These kind of click right in. How do we get that separation now? Right? The instructions would tell me, but I've decided I hate them. Right? It's like your aunt. I don't like her either. You know? We're not going to get into a three hours later situation. Good thing that just snapped off. All right, I was going to set that there. Shh. Shh. Right, these definitely go this way. That's just science. Does this slide? This is the part that I don't get. And we're running just as fast as we can. We're holding on to one another's hands. Trying to get away into the night And then you put your arms around me And we tumble to the ground And then you say There we go There we go Hold on Turn, turn We make the changes Turn, turn There we go There we go Science We're in here 
It's like, it's so crazy that they use like the Pontiac, you know, right here. I don't know how good that's going to look. It's black. But it's anyway, it's Pontiac Firebird front. Kind of bizarre. Okay, so we're in. We're in. We got the front of a car. Um, these go right here. Right? We're going to do some shooting. Blam, blam, blam. Now, where, good sir or ma'am, do I find the sweetness that is the guns for here? You know? No clue on... Oh, that's cool. All right, there we go. There we go. We're getting here. Someday. And for the rest of our lives. This will be out, and then this clicks down. There we go. We got it. We did it. I was wondering how that spacing worked, but that's that's how we get it. We we did it. Kevin Spacey, we did it. Am I allowed to say Kevin Spacey? That's the that's the real question. Hmm, does this go this way? See, this is what instructions are for, guys. Shh. Shh. Don't talk. Don't ruin this moment of me figuring it out. There we go. I did it. See? Okay, we turn it one more time. All right? So they connect. See those little little connectors? This is all I this is all I ask people when you make a transforming robot toy. You make it somewhat intuitive so that like a guy like me will just kind of figure it out. All right? All right, that's clicked in, that's clicked in. Kind of roll this over. Yeah. Oh, I want to get that. I get that right in that little notch, right? You know how it is. This video is going to be needlessly long because I don't feel like a prepping and transforming it ahead of time, being like, "Oh, look at me! I know everything." Um, instead. I'm going to fumble around for your amusement. Possibly my own. You know? Okay. Get in there. There's a little notch that just wants to... There we go. Okay. And that clicks in. There we go. There we go. Okay. So. We have a car. Right? And then the car... It's flat. There we go. All right. Now, this, these go into these pegs, and this clips in. Perfect. Okay, so that continues. We'll swing these out. You know how it is. And if you don't, well, now you do. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So yeah, pretty cool. How do you clip in, good sir? Or ma'am? Looks kind of like you go right in between these. All right. So you just kind of clip in. I'm going to drop these down. So this is like the tailgate. Right? Snaps in. See, things make sense. See, this, this is like elegant design. I'm gonna slide you in, and you're, gonna, you're just gonna clip right into these little clip right in here. Right. Toit, toit, toit. Just come. What does that do? Oh, is that what that does? Is that, is that what's giving me the problem? <clears throat> There we go. That little little trailer hitch thing. This little trailer hitch thing was giving me the problem all the time. Okay, we're we're in there. We're good. We got a, a very tight 
vehicle now, right? We've got our beautiful front piece, clips right in. Okay, now I don't know where these two gun pieces are. What, where are they supposed to appear from? What's in the box? Oh, here it is. Good God, it's on the under. See, this is why you look at these boxes. On the underside of the box is this. And wrapped inside of it is all the things I thought I was missing. It's just science, guys. Knife, turbine things. There we go. The, the walking leash for Ravage. Okay. Now, now we can get right down to it. So, we've got these. And which way do these? Oh, they go. Okay. So, we're going to pull this one off. Come on. We were a little overzealous in our uh, putting together of this device. There we go. And this one goes in here. And so did they turn? Oh, they, they do they do spin when you pull this through. That's cool. Right? So you got the gears going. Very nice. Okay. So we'll pop this back in. We've got our guns ready to blaze. So yeah, this so far. This thing is pretty cool. You know, sound wave. Okay, so we got our little antenna. So just go right in here. We've got sound waves, bizarre knife, but I'll, I'll take it. Okay, so we're, we're fully in vehicle mode. Right, here we are. We are fully in vehicle mode. We got the little side steps out, the whole bit. It's got the beautiful Pontiac Firebird front end with the lights and everything. Majestic. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm I'm a big fan. Ta-da. Let's transform it back. And then this one also pops out. Oh, how do I get that? Uh-oh. There we go. I was like, what? Okay, now. We've got to get under here. I've also got to pull that back up. There we go. Okay. You know, sometimes you got to give it to get it. You know what I'm saying? So, we go. Pop that up, turn that out. Pop this one up, turn it also out. You know what I'm saying? You gotta turn it out. But yeah, he's pretty cool. He's pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm a, and I'm a big fan. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm a big fan of kind of straightforward transformations, like obvious thing is obvious. And so yeah, that's pretty cool. We go this way. Oh yeah, you gotta fold it. You gotta fold his fists out. And they do a really cool little thing right here. Boom. You know? And you're like, hey, and he's and they're really poseable. Like that's kind of the cool thing about like a lot of the more modern transformers is that they're way more poseable than when we were kids. Like, that's for sure. Um, this little waist piece folds in to give Soundwave that snatched tight waist. You know, follow Soundwave for more, um, you know, workout tips, right? He's, he's really, he's really ahead of the game as far as that goes. Okay, now we'll... Swing this part out again. Swing his fists out again. Pop them down and around. And away we go. Yeah, he's a it's a really it's a really cool, you know, sculpt, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
yeah, it's like design is really good. You know, his head's fully posable. His little tape deck opens. Uh, we'll transform. Ravage. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and uh, put him in as the tape. Right? Like, who knows if I can even make that happen again? That's the real question you're asking yourself. Like, what's this guy fucking doing? Crazy shit, dog. You know? So, yeah. There's that. wonder why he folds that way. Where's his head go? Oh, it goes this way. That's right. It splits apart. Sometimes you got to split your head apart. It's just how it goes. Oh, yeah, that's how it goes because there's a little indent there. All right. Hold on, I'm going to rotate. I must rotate. There we go. Science. We're getting it. We're getting the science. Somebody is. Right? How does that go in? I refuse to look at instructions. Don't at me, bro. Um, I guess that would go down. Yeah, it does. All right. So a little pin, a little pinhole that goes in. Seems that way. There we go. That goes in. That goes in. Okay, and then he folds over. Ostensibly. Right? That's how the tape goes. This is the way the cookie crumbles. And then... Hmm. Hmm, you're asking yourself. You're like saying, Jay, what are you doing, bruh? Why won't you just look? Just look. Take two seconds and look at the instructions. And I say to you, nay. I, I refuse to look at the instructions for... See, see here, tape side? Tape side. We clearly have to Rubik's this cube. All right, we're just going to spin this guy around. Yep, that's how we do it. We did it, boys. We did it. We did it. We're here. There's nothing you can do about it. All right. Boom. There we go. He's a cassette tape. He's Milli Vanilli. He's whatever you want him to be. Okay. So there we are. He is now... A majestic cassette tape that we're going to put in Soundwave's chest. Boom. He's in there. Okay, now Soundwave has this weird knife. He's, he's going to knife a fool. And I'm all about that. Look at him. He's ready to stab, and I'm, I'm here for it. Um, we got this little foldy piece that I took off. I'm going to snap that back in. And fold it in like it should be. You know? He's got all these this little bits and bobs. I do like that he has this kind of like little seat thing that they can sit and stand on on the inside there. Um, it shows it in some of the pictures on the back of the box. But yeah, I, I dig this guy. He's pretty cool. Oh, we got the guns. I'm sure I can mount them on him somewhere. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got all the parts. Little thing for Ravage. You know? Don't forget Zartan the enemy. Right there. And Zarana the enemy. I'm really pleased with this. This is going to go up on my shelf. Pop you open. My That's my only complaint. I wish that spring was a little bit more oomphy. You know what I'm saying? Oomphy. Oomphy. You know, I just want it to be like pop. But also, 
he's really cool. He looks really cool. You know, it's got the wheels, it's got the GM licensing, if that's what you're looking for. All right, that's going to do it for me. If you liked everything you've seen here today, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, share it out in social media, let your mom know about it. I know she loves G.I. Joe and Transformers. All right, bye-bye. If you've watched the entire compilation, good on you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time for more compilations, more new videos, all that fun stuff. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye.